can't we go back to the good old days when comedians weren't just ill-informed political talking heads? It seems like Elon Musk shares that frustration because there's been some friction between him and Jimmy Kimmel that I think is a great jumping board to tell you how comedy on the left is being sacrificed at the altar of politics. For one, Jimmy Kimmel is perhaps the singular name that has solidly put himself on one end of the political spectrum to throw shade at the other, and perhaps there's nothing wrong with that because you could just call it a brand of comedy. The problem comes with a comedian like this tries to be taken too seriously, like a political pundit, and that has led Jimmy to butt heads with people like Donald Trump and Elon Musk plenty of times. Most notably, that happened when Musk bought Twitter and restored Donald Trump's account on the X platform. Here's what he wrote soon after Elon Musk's acquisition of X became official, quote, It has been interesting over the years to watch you blossom from the electric car guy into a fully formed POS. Musk had a pretty snarky yet cryptic message for him in the replies with a sarcastic sad face emoji at the thought of Jimmy not liking him. This brewing animosity between them was taken to the overdrive when the issue of Donald Trump and Musk's increasing hints at his support for him over those few months. Elon Musk apparently also found Jimmy's insisting comparisons of Trump to the German dictator distasteful, and that prompted him to call Jimmy Kimmel unfunny and that the other Jimmy was way better, referring to Jimmy Fallon. Here's a trailer of the kind of comedy his show has become. Biden last night weighed in on the furor over recent comments by Donald Trump vowing to root out what he called the vermin in our country, which is everyone who opposes him. Joe pointed out that vermin is a specific word with a specific meaning that echoes the language of Nazi Germany. And I know a lot of people have been comparing Trump to lately, but there are there are some major differences between. For instance, Hitler was married to a woman who loved him. OK. <laughs> and, and I will say. I get why people believe Trump is intentionally using words that he used. I just don't agree that he is. In order to know what words the Nazis used, you'd have to read, okay? You'd have to have <laughs> some basic knowledge of history. And it's not even funny. Even if you put politics aside, it's like listening to a partisan mainstream news channel with a pointless laugh track in the background. Of course, we need to have a sense to appreciate good political comedy on all sides, but Jimmy Kimmel making Donald Trump a consistent subject is only becoming stale and predictable. It's only so long before people can see what's coming and it erodes the very thing that makes humor great, which is not knowing where the punchline will be. That's perhaps why his jibe at Donald Trump, even on a platform like the Oscars this year, didn't land too well. Take a look and you'll agree. Has there ever been a worse host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? <laughs> his opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. <laughs> Get rid of Kimmel and perhaps replace him with another washed up but cheap ABC talent, George Slopinopoulos. He would make everybody on stage look bigger, stronger, and more glamorous. Blah, blah, blah. Make America great again. <laughs> See if you can guess which former president just posted that on Truth Center. Thank you for watching. I'm surprised you're still watching. Isn't it past your jail time? Reportedly, Jimmy Kimmel was asked not to do this joke at the Oscars, and it makes sense why, given it's one of the most prestigious platforms for filmmakers taken over by the same politicking we see at his show. Both Donald Trump and Elon Musk have been a favorite subject for many in mainstream television, and they seem to have cozied up with each other in recent times. It's not just Musk allowing Donald Trump back on X, but also a string of tweets and political statements he made in the past year that signaled his leaning toward the former president. That is, of course, before he put all rumors to rest and came out in full force in his endorsement of Trump after the failed attack against him in July. The two just had a long-form conversation on X for the first time in public broadcast online and seen by an estimated 700 million people across all platforms, and one consistent subject was the role of the media losing its place in the people's perception and trust. Here's a segment of that conversation that encapsulates this perfectly. I think it's obvious that you're, you're, you're a believer and an advocate of, of free speech because during your first term as president, you were attacked relentlessly every day, often very unfairly with false, you know, with, with false attacks. And and you didn't try to shut down the media. You didn't try to uh, in, inhibit their freedom of speech. And I think that says a lot. Well, the good thing is that you and I have, and some people, very few, uh, we can get the word out. Although sometimes it's hard because they don't want to print it. You know, like like we're having a great conversation right now. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not no. smart. <laughs> you know, she's not a smart person, by the way. She can't have this conversation. And Biden, we don't even have to talk about it. I mean, he couldn't have this conversation. He'd, he would have given up on the first half of a question. 
He would have walked out. He would have said, where am I? Where am I going? So anyway, but yes. uh, no, he wouldn't have this. That's true. Not a lot of people would have this conversation, but, you know, we cover a lot of territory. But the beauty is that, you you know, we can have a conversation and I, yes, I'm able to get it out without because I get treated <laughs> this unfairly. Is a, this is a really big point. You can actually have a conversation yeah. with you. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> and you can't have a conversation with Biden or Kamala. It's like not, uh, it's not possible. Yes, yeah, sure. um, so it, this is like talking to an NPC. No. So it's just impossible. Well, but think um, of it. We need a man or a person who's unbelievably sharp in order to stop all the nuclear danger and all the dangers that I'm talking about. It's no wonder then that the rise of alternative media platforms are starting to see more traffic and attention than even some traditional media outlets. It's not just driven by online media promising more divergent voices and conversations, but also how the legacy media have proven themselves to be beholden to other people than their audience they serve. Perhaps it's part of a broader disillusionment that people are having with the system at large while they gravitate to something else that makes more sense at the time. And if that's what is driving Musk and Trump together, we might see them collaborate further, even potentially in an administration, because there's rumors Elon Musk may be given an important position in the government if Donald Trump wins in November. Would you, I, I read that Elon Musk said that he would accept a position in your cabinet. Would that have to do with artificial intelligence? So if Elon you chose and I him? have a great relationship. It's, he's great. He is a totally unusual character. Do you know Elon? At all? I don't. He's great. And he's smart. And we have to cherish our geniuses. You know, we don't have too many of them, right? But he is a, a brilliant guy. And uh, what he really would like to do is get involved in cutting some of the fat. And he does know how to do it. And he loves the country. You know, it's just an amazing thing. We had a conversation the other day. You would know better than me, but I hear it had hundreds of millions of people. I heard it had the biggest audience that there's ever been. I mean, would you say that's a correct statement? Oh, absolutely. There's that's never correct. been anything even close. I heard 750 million people. I mean, numbers that are crazy. And um, yeah, he, he wants to be involved. Now, look, he's running big businesses and all that. So he can't really, I don't think he'd be for cabinet. I'd put him in the cabinet, absolutely, but I don't know how he could do that with all the things he's got going. But he can sort of, as the expression goes, consult with the country and give you some very good ideas. Even if that doesn't happen, that's still on brand for Elon Musk since he was able to make Donald Trump come back to X after years. When he made this post before their joint podcast earlier this year, Musk had also reaffirmed his Republican leanings with a tweet that read, quote, I voted 100% Dem until a few years ago. Now I think we need a red wave or America's toast. That's as clear as one can be, but it's still interesting to see how this partnership turns out in the future. Let me know in the comments how you feel about this, because we might be seeing the two of them together for many years to come.